On March 31, 2021, French President Emmanuel Macron announced a four-week national lockdown, throwing the country into a similar situation slightly over a year ago. This time, though, not all businesses are affected the same way. HEC Paris Associate Professor of Economics Tomasz Mikalski analyzes the possible microeconomic impact of the different lockdown strategies and its eventual long-term effects. Let me discuss uh, the differences between the current lockdown in France and compare this with the one we had between March and May 2020. I will abstract throughout from the efficacy of these measures in combating the pandemic and I will concentrate on the economic impact. Last year, harsher measures were perhaps warranted to abate the virus spread, but this year there is hope that the ongoing vaccination campaign with this milder lockdown say beginning of June, will help to eradicate the scourge. The current lockdown is, for the time being, shorter, only four weeks in total. It's also less strict. There's a freedom of movement within 10 kilometers, and there's also a wider definition of what essential businesses are, and many of them are open. For example, bookstores, florists, barbers, that all were closed during the first lockdown. There are also some three weeks of school closures all across the board, but two weeks of those were supposed to be spring break anyway. This is important because last year, approximately 15% of workers had to stay home involuntarily to take care of their children. And this led to approximately 40% of the GDP losses then. So perhaps we're going to avoid such big impact this year. There is also more homeworking with one day in the office per week allowed, which wasn't necessarily the case last year for many um, businesses. This different strategy on the economic side has definitely disparate consequences than the first one, and this is for two reasons. First of all, obviously these restrictions leave more freedom to the citizenry. More businesses are open, and the loser restriction caused that people work and shop more. Google Mobility reports show that the last year's confinement led to twice as high drops in economic activity in terms of visits to retail outlets or workplaces, up to 80% fall in comparison with the pre-COVID situation. Consequently, this year, with lower drops, more businesses will survive in the long run than if we adopted the same strategy as last year. There are many also other factors that cause that the impact of the lockdowns this year will be more benign, irrespective of the loser and the restrictions. First of all, the lockdown in March 2020 was a complete surprise, and there was a big ambiguity about the evolution of the pandemic. Many industries, including manufacturing, not only services, initially ground to a halt and were operating at low capacity later on. At the same time, there was a strong negative import supply shock from all over the world. China, other Asian countries, European countries like Italy. Necessary inputs were not arriving to factories. This time, no such thing occurred, and external demand conditions on top of that are favorable. Chinese, US, UK economies are strongly rebounding, continental Europe is holding on, and will recuperate quickly once the third wave is handled in two, three months, at least. Those are the expectations, as seen in many leading indicators, including the behavior of the stock market or purchasing managers' indices. COVID-19 has now been raging across the globe for the past year. Throughout the separate waves of the pandemic and the differing strategies for each, governments, businesses and individuals have become versatile in adapting quickly to sudden changes. Tomasz Mikalski explains how the local economy has become even more resilient since the beginning of this health crisis. The behavior of economic agents uh, between last year and now evolved as well. Firms and customers invested in computer hardware, e-technologies, and know-how. The French Statistical Office surveys show that larger firms, those with more than 50 employees, invested in particular in online sales. At the same time, teleworking has become more prevalent. Online purchases, deliveries, more common, and customers grew much more sophisticated. This allowed that already existing services like online banking, retail, doctor's appointments were used much more intensively, but also new solutions arrived. For example, the various e-platforms to sign contracts, visit properties for real estate transactions, etc. 
as a consequence of this evolution, many sectors, for example, industry, found now their level of pre-crisis activity, despite the lockdown. None of the key sectors in the production network is especially affected this time. The motor vehicle sector is a stark example. During April 2020, the activity level in the sector was barely above 10% of the normal, while now it surpassed its pre-crisis volumes. As a result, GDP in April uh, 2021 should be lower by 7% in comparison to the pre-crisis period, but in April 2020 it was lower by a whopping 31%. Banque de France still predicts a strong 5.5 GDP rebound for France overall in 2021. A key observation in this health crisis is that its negative impact weighs more heavily on some sectors and businesses while leaving others practically unscathed or scaling up at an even much higher rate. Governments worldwide have introduced several new measures to help businesses survive through the pandemic. But how far can such aid stop the economic bleed? Professor Mikulski explains. The government can help. The main new measures that were introduced last year that targeted businesses such as furloughing workers or guarantees for loans based on past revenue definitely did a lot in preserving the fabric of the economy, the employee-employer relations or buyer-supplier links. Uh, they were unprecedented in scale and stopped uh, short of a de facto nationalizations of firms. The uptake was massive, especially in the most affected sectors. And in many instances, they are still in place, but there are limits to that intervention. For example, will the workers remain with their previous firms that were places of employment as lockdowns persist, or will they move on to other jobs? This is what often happened in the US. Will the firms themselves survive? There are questions about the viability of many businesses, especially restaurants, hotels, tourist attractions, discos. The demand may come back for these services in the medium term once uh, we surpass the sanitary crisis. But then uh, will the same businesses survive or will there be a string of bankruptcies on the way with many assets changing hands? For some uh, owners of those businesses, decades of hard work and capital accumulation are lost. In other sectors, smaller firms lost at least one supplier or buyer more frequently than the large ones. The French Statistical Institute says that uh, among firms uh, between 10 to 49 employees, 48% of them lost at least one supplier or buyer uh, during the last year's lockdown, in comparison to 30% among those that have more than 250 employees. Moreover, smaller firms have fewer buyers and suppliers, so were more severely impacted on net. The production network has changed and it was in the favor of small firms. Moreover, investment in online capabilities was done particularly by large firms that as an effect became more productive, which for the overall economy is good, but this also means that the barriers to entry increased. That limits competition and is detrimental for small firms. Competition became more intense with online stores where customers can compare prices more easily and many new international actors also arrived. So a demand stimulus will definitely help, but perhaps there needs to be some targeted measure to expand technological capabilities of especially small firms, both from the public investment side, for example, in broadband stability, which is not a done deal in France, or 5G networks, but also for within firm transitions to expand online capabilities and perhaps also some other technological capabilities like those related with artificial intelligence or robotics. Aid for entrepreneurs that lost their entire livelihood could be also envisaged, especially in the most affected hospitality industries, if those entrepreneurs want to start anew. Such people are often leaders in small local communities, so that is going to be pretty important, and we won't lose entrepreneurial talent. In this past one year, the COVID-19 pandemic has altered how companies do business, the way societies live, and the manner in which individuals perceive their personal and professional lives.
Tomas Mikalski mentions some of the repercussions from the coronavirus that may just be here to stay. There are some questions about the long-run consequences of the pandemic and the lockdowns. Will the new consumer habits persist? For example, are we going to go to our habits in terms of travel? In some sectors, for example, in sciences, it has been revealed that attending conferences is not necessarily correlated with scientific output, so we can do without them. While teleworking has been shown to be effective in simple tasks, such as in a sector like call centers, or improve the satisfaction of many office workers in the short run, the long run impact on productivity of teleworking is still unclear. Think about starting new complex projects and teams. Moreover, the French statistical office surveys show that e-working solutions were available within a sizable proportion of firms for at least 10 years, but they did not take a massive recourse to them. So did we observe an adoption of a new technology that was forced and we're going to persist in using that technology? Or are we going to revert back to old ways when the pandemic subsides? There's also an important question about the social and political consequences of the pandemic and the lockdowns. We often speak of the K-impact and K-recovery as people on the different sides of the skill and income spectrum were affected differentially. The skilled living in large cities, they could telework, they didn't lose their jobs. At the same time, the poorest, many that are employed in face-to-face tasks or in sectors most hit by COVID, like hotels, restaurants, transport, they were furloughed or simply lost their jobs and still may not be recovering them soon. Moreover, uh, throughout France, most impact was felt in commuting zones that were heavily exposed to tourism or manufacturing of transport equipment. And those were typically the more prosperous ones. There were the more prosperous ones in a whole sea of very poor regions, at least in relation to large French cities. So will some of these heavily hit regions like Savoie, Alsace, Saint-Nazaire, Enfleur, Salat La Caneda, that voted very strongly for President Macron in the second round of the presidential election in 2017, will they change their mind next year? Time will tell.